On October 24, 2025, a major controversy erupted in Russian tech circles following the publication of an interview with Andrei Dokomov, chief executive officer of Baikal Electronics. The head of Baikal discussed the fate of the ordered but undeliverable processors, the role of Western sanctions, and the process by which Russia is restructuring its microelectronics industry following the effective confiscation by TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, in a conversation with Business FM's chief editor, Ilya Kuplovich. Baikal processors were exclusively manufactured at TSMC, the world's largest contract semiconductor manufacturer, until 2022. Baikal T processors, for telecommunication and embedded applications, as well as the more potent Baikal M processors, for workstations and personal computers, were manufactured at this location. Baikal Electronics had successfully produced and delivered approximately 60,000 processors to Russia by February 2022, as per Andrei Evdokimov. The objective was to manufacture a minimum of 200,000 units. However, subsequent to Taiwan's adoption of anti-Russian sanctions, all additional development was halted. We had placed orders for more than 200,000 and over 150,000 produced or partially produced processors remain frozen in Taiwan to this day. They are not being given to us because of sanctions. And the money has not been returned either, said Evdokimov. In essence, the cancellation results in a multi-million dollar loss as the prepayment remains unrecovered and the order remains unfulfilled. Since TSMC fulfilled all Russian orders until February 2022, Russian experts have already compared this episode to outright fraud. However, the company withheld both the money and the finished products, officially citing the sanctions regime as justification. Similar incidents have previously occurred in other high-tech sectors, including information technology infrastructure and aerospace. Nevertheless, the Baikal case was one of the most prominent as it pertains to intellectual property and foundational production chains for national security, rather than completed equipment. How Russia Lost Access to Advanced Technology Nodes The TSMC incident was not an isolated issue, rather it exposed systemic issues within Russia's manufacturing capabilities. Russian companies had only equipment capable of producing chips at technology nodes no smaller than 90 to 65 nanometers before 2014. However, the development of these technologies had reached a near stop. In the early 1990s, the domestic lithography machinery for 350 nanometer technology, which was developed in the late Soviet era, was abandoned. Interest in modernization resumed only after 2022. Russian designers were able to develop processors at 28 and 16 nanometer nodes. However, they were unable to be manufactured domestically due to a lack of infrastructure. Russia was essentially an ideas factory by the late 2010s, unable to convert designs into finalized products. It was a risky but necessary measure to send all production orders to Taiwan. The complete blockage of the channel in spring 2022 forced Baikal's developers to search for new international manufacturing partners. Russia is currently in the process of establishing its own production lines for microchips at 90 and 60 nanometers, with the intention of eventually reaching 45 nanometers. This is designated as a strategic priority within the National Program for Technological Sovereignty. Evdokimov acknowledges that it is still impossible to manufacture Baikal processors on Russian bases. Nevertheless, he observes a moderate degree of optimism, as the number of alternative contract manufacturers who are prepared to collaborate with Russia is progressively increasing. These factories are located in South Korea, Malaysia, and China. These options, despite their partiality, enable the restoration of production within an international cooperation network that circumvents Western blockades. Sanctions affected not only manufacturing, but also architectural licenses. The British ARM architecture, which is extensively used worldwide, 
was the basis for the chips produced by Baikal Electronics until 2022. Nevertheless, ARM discontinued all collaboration with the Russian company following the implementation of sanctions, which prohibited the provision of technical support or updates. Baikal engineers responded by transitioning to the open RISC-5 architecture. Evdokimov argues that this decision, while strategically justified, is not straightforward. Although ARM is technically open, it necessitates license fees for each production use of its cores. Conversely, RISC-5 permits any developer to employ and modify the architecture without compensating patent holders. RISC-5 says please, develop on me, whoever you want, with minimal restrictions. This is important for us because Russia already has developers of cores based on RISC-5, said Baikal's chief executive officer. Russia has a unique opportunity to establish an entirely independent design chain, from the core to the final device, as a result of this architectural switch. The company uses cores developed by a domestic team in St. Petersburg to develop new microcontrollers, thereby preserving intellectual resources within the country. An intriguing aspect of the interview was the reference to a manufacturing venture that took place in a factory in Kaliningrad. The factory in Kaliningrad attempted to construct the Baikal M processor using crystals and substrates previously manufactured in Taiwan and delivered before the restrictions. The quality of the chips improved considerably after several manufacturing cycles, although the initial yields of acceptable chips did not exceed 50%. This incident demonstrated that Russia is capable of establishing complete assembly cycles, regardless of the origin of the silicon. The experiment was terminated due to a shortage of components. However, the successful phase demonstrated that technology barriers can be partially overcome. In autumn 2025, Baikal Electronics introduced the Baikal U1000, a new microcontroller that is competitive in terms of price and features, despite being designed with simplified technology. This incident facilitated the company's entry into the rapidly growing Russian microcontroller market, which is estimated to be worth over 10 million units annually. Today, microcontrollers are in widespread use, ranging from industrial automation and telecommunications to household appliances and smart home systems. Evdokimov emphasized that the Baikal U1000 is functionally equivalent to the Western STM32 from ST Microelectronics and has already garnered interest from Russian equipment manufacturers. Additionally, the price is comparable to that of foreign counterparts, which renders it competitive based on market logic rather than solely on origin. Evdokimov also addressed the issue of decorative import substitution during the interview. In the past, manufacturers have been involved in controversies for installing Russian microchips purely to earn additional points in government procurement, although these components did not actively participate in the operation of the devices. The leader of Baikal referred to such schemes as deception highlighting that they undermine the entire domestic microelectronics sector. He stated that the organization endeavors to avoid collaborating with partners who employ their products in such a manner, and instead prioritizes fair competition that capitalizes on genuine technological advantages. Nevertheless, Baikal's team persists in the development of new processor models, despite significant losses and delays. Evdokimov disclosed that the construction of the next-generation Baikal L processor commenced in 2021 to succeed the Baikal M processor. This chip is being made for the post-sanction era and its reliance on global partnerships, so it should be more modern and powerful. He expressed confidence that Baikal L will enter series production and be widely used in both government programs and commercial sectors once manufacturing channels are restored. From the arrest of founder Vesevolod Panasenko in 2019 to the calamitous supply disruptions in 2022, the company faced numerous critical crises. However, the company managed to maintain and even expand its core team. If the company had approximately 90 personnel in 2020, 
it had grown to 220 by autumn 2025, with approximately 70% of them being engineers. Baikal Electronics was able to recruit new experts and enhance its competencies in circuit design and physical design, despite a general shortage of qualified specialists. Evdokimov observed the establishment of two parallel division of labor systems, Western and Eastern, while assessing the modern global microelectronics industry. The first group includes the United States, Europe, Japan, and South Korea, while the second group focuses on China, Malaysia, and the BRICS countries. He stated that Russia is inevitably becoming a component of the Eastern system, which could have a beneficial effect. The competition between two technology ecosystems will encourage the growth of both. In conclusion, the tale of TSMC was a bitter but valuable lesson. Russia practically recognized that technological coercion and losses are the consequences of relying on foreign production centers. Nevertheless, Baikal Electronics was able to restructure and continue development by transitioning to new architectures and markets, despite the loss of assets and partners. The company is retaining its dedication to full control over software and architecture, while also relying on the future Baikal L processor and a microcontroller series in 2025. Russian Microelectronics is gradually reclaiming its right to design and manufacture its circuits, albeit through international cooperation at present. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us 